Hello everyone. Welcome to the world of data structures. Our today's topic is spanning tree. How to make spanning tree from DFS and BFS traversal. And then we'll talk about the difference between DFS and BFS, the graph traversal algorithms. Hi, this is your instructor Janice Shah. So let's begin with the today's outlines. Students, today first we are going to learn about the spanning tree, how to make a spanning tree from the BFS, the breadth first search and how to make a spanning tree from depth first search our two most important graph traversal algorithms and then we'll talk about the difference between both of them so let's start with the how to make a spanning tree from bfs see if you have seen my previous videos of dfs and bfs you will get the idea that this is my final answer after bfs okay so how to get the answer quickly let's take a look uh, in a few seconds First here we I am just going to start with the node A okay just follow the sequence of my hands okay so first I need to start with node A so node I am going to visit node A so node A becomes my first visited nodes okay after it after it what I am going to do is I am just going to this is a breadth first search okay remember this is a breadth first search so I need to visit its adjacent nodes first what are the adjacent nodes of A? They are they are C and E, C and E. So after visiting A, I need to visit C and E. Okay, that's why my answer becomes A, C, E, A, C and E. Okay, because from the adjacent, I'm going to start with the arbitrary wise. That's why from C and E, and you select C first, then go with E. So my answer is A, C, E. Okay, so now A completed. A completed okay now after a what we have C so now start with C start to find out the adjacent nodes of C the adjacent nodes of C are B D and F B D and F so start with the arbitrary sequence that is B D and F so just write after the B D and F so the whole sequence becomes A C E B D and F this is known as final answer or how to solve the BFS algorithm quickly fine okay so what happens sir if we have more nodes so after completing c sequence you need to go with e after completing e you need to go with b then d then f okay so you have to go like this okay but this is the breadth first so you always need to search in breadth of the branch of graph okay now let's start with the spanning tree before starting with the spanning tree how to make a spanning tree from the bfs or dfs traversal let me tell you some little bit about the spanning tree students we are going to make spanning tree from this particular graph only this is tree not a graph that's why this is it is not cyclic okay all nodes are connected with each other but not a, they never made a cycle form cycle means a closed path there is no closed path like a c d e a or b c f b c f okay no it is not like that it is not like that there is no closed path in spanning tree okay and the all nodes are connected with each other in some manner okay so let's begin with the spanning tree how to make spanning tree from the bfs traversals see first you need to get the answer of bfs here i have bfs answer that is a c e b d and f so do not worry about uh, that how to make spanning tree you just need to follow just need to follow the sequence of this answer first we have a so start with a so here it is a okay now same as figure you need to draw the nodes or you need to draw the position of the node same as the graph figure that's why i'm just highlighting at the both sides okay so when i'm selecting a then we have c then we have c so this is if this is my a c goes like this c goes like this so you have to draw same as the graph only so here it is i'm just highlighting the c line this is my c okay now then we have e so c we have e okay so e is connected from a e is connected from a so just draw like this i'm highlighting first e over there in the figure and draw like this here it is my e okay so it goes like breadth first search breadth first search okay this is node then visit its adjacent nodes so a sequence like a c and f okay fine so then we need to visit e so draw like this next we have b next we have b so we move towards the b from c okay from c okay that's why it goes like this here it is my b and 
it connected like this this is my basic students okay now next we have next we have d with us next we have d with us so d is also connected from c okay d is the adjacent of c that's why we need to draw like this c here we have two different options either d e or c d here we have two different options either d e or c d but students if you remember if you remember the sequence like we have to go d with c if you remember the bradford search algorithm solution after a we are taking c d is connected with c okay so you can draw like this c dash d okay some of you may my may write like e dash d is that is that right it yes it can be a right answer but you always need to follow according to the bfs algorithm okay so next we have last that is f f is also connected with c so here it is this is my f okay so this becomes my spanning tree see all nodes are connected yes all nodes are connected there is no isolated node there is no isolated node okay see check it out okay this is my spanning tree because there is no cycle there is no isolated nodes and all nodes are connected with each other fine so this is my spanning tree answer okay so why we are using spanning tree and how to make it we will see in the spanning tree lecture okay till now you just need to remember like this you can make you have to make spanning tree after getting the answer of bfs and dfs okay so this is my answer of bfs now let's move towards the dfs depth first search so here we have in depth first search students we have answer like this a c b f d and e okay so same as bfs we can also go direct with dfs answer how so we are i'm just going to solve this dfs quickly okay first i need to start with a so visit a that is in my answer bucket now from the adjacent node i need to select only one according to arbitrary that's why i'm going to go with c so from a after c so a then c now go with c check out the arbit adjacent nodes they are b and d b and d so go with b b a c and b now talking about the b we have unvisited adjacent node that is f so go with f so goes like this a c b f now next we have at f all the nodes are visited all the nodes are visited there is no adjacent unvisited nodes so you need to do backtracking over there okay so get back to the parent node or get back to the node from which you are coming to that f node that is b so from f i need to go back to the b all nodes are visited get back to the c all nodes are visited no d is pending so now we need to go with d then go with e so that is my answer so same as bfs you can always get the answer in dfs quickly within the few seconds but you need to follow the method as per the stack in my previous lecture okay now next we have first need to visit a so i'm just draw a over there then just follow the answer just follow the answer don't think much just follow the answer to make the spanning tree next we have c so draw a arrow c next we have b so we are drawing c to b line okay c to b line next we have f so i am going with b to f b to f over there okay now what to do next c f is alone should i need to connect f and c should i need to connect f and c no never made a mistake like that because that becomes closed path c b f c b f c okay that becomes closed path that is not our spanning tree so you need to get back to the from f to b b to c then c to d like this c to d then d to e so here it is d to e this is again my spanning tree from dfs you feel get the very much difference between the dfs and bfs both get us the traversal order of graph but where to use dfs when to use bfs let's take it understand about in the dfs bfs difference so here it is dfs and bfs the first difference see the complexity of dfs bfs are same that is o of v minus e v is vertices e is edges when adjacency list you are using and then if you are using adjacency matrix then obviously the 
complexity becomes O of V square because in matrix we are using two for loops okay and in both for loops we are making iterations up to the number of nodes that's why O of V square becomes its time complexity when it we are using representation using adjacency matrix okay next we have next we have students the DFS are more suitable when we have solutions from the source okay when the solu when the nodes are far from the source but BFS is more important when the nodes are nearer to source okay next we have DFS is more suitable for the game or puzzle solving examples whether BFS is not used for the puzzle solving examples okay it is mostly considered for the neighbors first that's why it is not used for the puzzle solving examples next BFS BFS is used in the topological sorting and BFS is used for the shortest path finding out then used to solve the backtracking problems of graph DFS is used to detecting the cycle in the graph and the BFS used to finding out the all the connected component in the graph okay so in BFS we are just going as a bread first search in DFS we are going the depth in the of the graph first okay so that's it for today's lecture students thank you so much